Asalaamu As Alaikum and hello to everyone. Um, I'm making this video, inshallah, to do with um, the four wives in Islam and also to do with love marriage and arranged marriages and because I, I was watching some other videos on YouTube. First of all, I would like to say, um, please don't get upset because a lot of people do actually get upset when someone says this to them. But the thing is, the reason why the Muslim Ummah has got so many problems is because we're not following the true Islam. Someone is sitting at the other end of the laptop, or someone's sitting in the mosque, or someone's sitting in a hall and is telling a group of people, you know, Islam is like this, and Islam is like that, and sisters and brothers are like, oh yes, it is, it is, it is. Instead of open, opening the Quran and going and reading and seeking knowledge, we're just believing what other people are saying to us, instead of getting up and seeking knowledge that we're supposed to be doing. We're not doing that. If someone's sitting at the other end and we're just listening to them, there's, there's this person, then there's that person, and then don't you? I mean, don't people want to actually get up and go and seek knowledge instead of listening to other people? Because there's a lot of people. They're not telling you um, things from the Quran. You you will see people adding things and then taking things away. It's up to you to go and seek knowledge. Because then you're going to pass it on to someone else. And then, what's the point of getting punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for telling lies? That's one. Uh, two is about mm, four wives. I keep hearing um, like some people, I don't, I don't want to mention names, having more than one wife isn't a joke. There is some serious punishment. And the sisters, if I say to this to the sisters, they're like, oh, mashallah, yes, I do understand that now. And if you say to the brothers that, you know, it's like this and it's like that, they don't like it because all they want to hear is, oh, you could have four wives and that's it. Or what about the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because women are not sex toys. I mean, why would you want to look at as a woman look at a woman or a girl as a sex toy. Well, some men, I've, heard, I've seen some really disgusting, nasty comments. It's not very nice as a woman for me to see another man saying, oh, I wouldn't mind having four wives because I can choose who I want to sleep with. I mean, is that what she, is that what she means to you? I mean, do you not have mothers and sisters and daughters of your own? Because would you like it if another man was looking at your mother and sister and daughter like that? My dad and my brothers, um, they even my stepdad, they absolutely hate it if a man even looks at my mum or looks at my sisters in a funny way. They absolutely hate it because they know that a woman should be taken care of and not hurt and not abused and she's not a sex toy. Because even if one man looks at me in a funny way, my brothers, they go mad. They don't like it. If you've got mother, sisters and daughters of your own, don't you think you should be looking and thinking to yourself, well, I should have respect for other people's mother, sisters and daughters because I've got some of my own. Because anyway, if you read the Quran, it doesn't actually say, oh, you can have one, two, three, four wives of your choice and they are your sex toys and no. You have to look up. First of all, in everything we do, we do for the sake of Allah. So if you want to give charity, you make your intention. I'm going to give this ten pounds, five pounds for the sake of at least one p for the sake of Allah. I'm going to give this food for the, to my neighbours for the sake of Allah. I'm going to fast for the sake of Allah. I'm going to get up in the middle of the night and worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the sake uh, for the for His sake. Um, I'm going to feed these animals for the sake of Allah. I want to get married for the sake of Allah. Everything we do, so even if you do want to have four wives, you have to do it for the sake of Allah because I want, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah because I want to support and help them and look after them. Mm, 
why is it so important to marry a virgin? Why not marry someone who's divorced with a couple of kids, give her a roof over her head, look after her, take care of her? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that big time. Because at the end of the day, women are not toys and they're not sex toys. Oh, well, you're not a virgin no more, so that means you should be pushed into prostitution. And the one that is a virgin, she should get the highest respect. No. We are humans. Before, the once upon a time, there was no Islam. And before Islam, there was not, there was, we were humans. So what? So we can't respect each other. We can't respect other people's mothers, sisters and daughters. I mean, if her sister wanted to, her husband to get married, she would have to say, oh, we're going to do it for the sake of Allah because that sister, she's a divorcer, she's a widow and she's got children, she's got no money, she hasn't got a roof over her. We're doing this for the sake of Allah. We're not doing it for her sake, that she, the woman, so she can come and be a slave for the first wife. No. So what was the other thing? Um... And if you do have more than one wife, where, how, I mean, like, what are you going to feed her? Brothers are finding it really, really, really hard to look after the first wife. Because I've heard them saying it, I'm struggling to look after my first wife and second, uh, sorry, my first, my, my wife and my children. So if you haven't got no money, how are you going to look after a second wife? How are you going to feed her? How are you going to clothe her? Because this is the thing that people are forgetting because you have to answer your wife. The, if you want to take another wife, you have to feed her, you have to clothe her. It has to come from your pocket, not your mum and dad's pocket or your sister and brother's pocket or from the, well, I live in the UK and what, the DSS or the government is going to pay for your second wife. No, it doesn't work like that. In the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi time, they didn't have the DSS and the welfare um, or the government funds and all this. They didn't have any of that. The men used to feed and clothe their wives from their own pocket. And you have to treat them equal, 50-50. And also in the Quran, it says that you cannot be just to your wives. So think about it, because there is a hadith that if you can't be just to your wives, you'll be paralyzed from one side. So if my husband said to me, I want to go and take another wife, I'll be like, oh, is it now? That's fine with me, but have you got the money? I mean, I don't want her staying in my house. She's your responsibility, not mine. So you better go and find her another house. Two sets of rent, two sets of council taxes, two sets of feeding, clothing, and then when the children come along, I mean, who's going to pay for them? The government. Why should the government pay for your wife? And plus, the government is changing all its rules. And there's no way you can have more than one wife on benefits. That's one. I'm sorry, that's two. And then three is, I keep hearing people say, oh, love marriages don't work. Love marriages only don't work because, like, my parents are like, my mum's mixed race and my dad's Pakistani. So, from, so I'll pick on the Pakistanis. So Pakistanis don't really like their children, or most of them don't like it when their children choose a partner. They arrange it for them. So when they do find someone they fall in love with, they don't allow the marriage to work because there's both sides of the parties, the both sides, the mum and the dad and everybody's always interfering so the love marriage doesn't work. I had an arranged marriage a long time ago, well I wasn't Muslim then, and my marriage didn't work, I got divorced. I was dying to get divorced because I didn't want to, well I didn't really, it was arranged and I didn't really want to marry him, but I just did it for my family. I couldn't wait till I got divorced. And then I did eventually fall in love with someone, and the problem is, that if his uh, side of the family is not allowing it to work, my side of the family is fine, alhamdulillah, but his side of the family is not allowing it to work. 
But where the love is so strong, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who puts love in the heart. We, human beings, we can't even feed our own selves. The only reason why we move, we talk, we laugh, we, we cry, we do all these different things. We move, we get up, we do things, we go to work. Our hands move, our feet move, our bones, everything, our muscles. It's because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because of, I mean, yeah, my soul is in my body. It's only moving and functioning, everything's functioning because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah, people say there's no such thing as love, there is such thing as love. It's, you know, it's really wrong for people to say this. Because I know lots of people who have had love, love marriages and their marriages have worked. And also I know lots of people who have had a, arranged marriages, not love marriages. And uh, don't give it eight, nine months. After about three or four years later, the brother, especially from the brother's side, they're starting to look for a second wife because there's no love there. I've spoken to loads of people and like, especially like brothers, they're looking for second wife because there's no love in the marriage that they had arranged or they just got married. Oh, brother, brother, sister, sister, um, there's no such thing as love in Islam. Just marry the first person you meet and then they, that's what they do. And then so many of the brothers are actually, I mean one time I was going to this mosque and half of that mosque the brothers were looking for a second wife because they said we're looking for love. So many people I meet who are married, even sisters, they're saying to me I've got no love in my marriage. And I keep saying to my husband, why don't you show me love? Why don't you make love to me? Why don't you show me love? I'm looking for like romance in my marriage. Please don't say to people that's not true. Because you know what? I've been married in arranged marriage and then I fall in love with someone. And I tell you something, the two, I prefer the one with the love marriage because we do love each other so much. We love each other so much that it's been like a very long time that we've had people interfering and doing things and, and we're just still holding on because the, the love is so strong and it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who puts love in your heart. We can never ever do anything. He can put love in your heart. He can take love out of your heart. He can do anything. So this thing about there's no such thing as love, there's no such thing as love marriage, there is. The only problem, right, especially with the Pakistani community, and I know it's other communities as well, I mean like SubhanAllah, what I mean is like in other parts of like the Ummah, different countries, people don't like it, they don't allow their children to get married to someone of their choice. It does work. And a lot of people, SubhanAllah, because I go out, go out there and go and mix with people, go and mix with married people and then I'm the, I've been, I talk to everyone, I'm, I talk to everyone, I'm mixed with all people and I've heard so many sisters and brothers saying that they're looking for love. So please don't say that love isn't true because love is true. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was in love with his first wife so much, subhanAllah. The only reason why he married all the other wives is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our Prophet, peace be upon him, to marry all these women. To, 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 to take care of them, to give them a roof over their head because most of them were divorced or widows and no one didn't want to know them. And that is actually happening now. Just because a sister is divorced, oh, you're used good. But how is a woman used good? We're human beings. We don't have the right to say these horrible things to someone else and make them feel so disgusting. You cannot compare a human being like some guy, subhanAllah, was saying, oh, a woman is like half-eaten hamburger. How can you, subhanAllah, compare a human being with a hamburger? Is, is that what a lot of men see women as food? You just take a bite and then you just throw it to one side. SubhanAllah, we should have some sort of fear and stop spreading some nonsense. That's all I wanted to say. Assalamu alaikum and bye.